I'm going to start streaming. I don't know what that means. I am not offline. Yay! It has been a minute. Where's my coffee? Because if I can't find it, fuck you guys. I'm not offline. I'm here. Am I not? Am I offline? I don't know. Someone said I'm offline. Someone. Who am I kidding? Moonwitch said I was offline. I should be here. Am I here? Where am I? <laughs> Where am I? Hi, Moonwitch. How are you doing? I'm back. I had a wonderful family reunion full of anxiety and how the fuck can I get out of here and go back to painting? But I, I love you all. No, I don't. <laughs> you couldn't help yourself. Okay, all right. Of course, he's offline. Always fun to make up fake technical difficulties for the streamer. <laughs> Good times. Oh, and look, Jub Jub just went live. Fucking finally. <laughs> I think I was missed. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in. I'm out of here. It's been a great show, and uh, I'll see you next week. <laughs> yes, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, yeah, family reunion, I needed a couple days to decompress and get some, uh, business shit done. I did sign my new contract with OCB Rolling Papers, so I'm good with them for another year, and, uh, some other stuff is, uh, has come together, which, um, has been awesome, so, uh, I think I will be switching up my streaming schedule a little, instead of, uh, yeah, I know, I gotta get my Discord set up, but, um, yeah, I'm going to figure out my streaming because I would rather do like three days a week where I stream a lot longer and actually come on a little bit earlier um, because I know there's some people that when I log on, it's already East Coast time for them. And then, uh, you know, oh, you expected new art, did you? No, it's the same bitch. So <laughs> I'm going to finish her up real quick. It shouldn't take more than an hour or so. I'm just doing some detail work. I already got my sketch pad here, and we're going to start working on the next one in this series, and uh, uh, we'll flush that out tonight and, and get uh, get him going. But we're going to do uh, uh, Genius Pipe is ready to manufacture these new ones, so I have to get the next two designs done. We're doing the uh, the Alice series. We're bringing them out of Wonderland. We're putting them in uh, the real world, giving them day jobs, so the next one will be the Caterpillar with uh, as a sandwich artist from Subway. Since he has that many arms, I mean, it just makes it, you know... Seems like that'd be a best job for him, or or maybe the happy ending guy at a Asian massage parlor. I don't know. Right? Sugar in the back there? Hey, I got, I got fresh weed. He's got fresh weed. I know you guys have been out of weed for a week, too, so... <laughs> Sorry about that. You've been out of virtual sugar weed? But... It's a, oh, yeah. Here, let's show it off. Tonight is brought to you by Skagit Organics. Here's their dime bag. Woo. There we go. Oh, I like this package. Green Acres is the place to be. There we go. Double stuffed. Here we go. I'm going to put that right there. Oh, uh, where'd it go? Where'd that Michelobio go? Which one? I had the painted one out here. I wanted to show it off tonight. Um, <laughs> band. <laughs> one second. Let me see if I can find my little space alien dude for you guys. Uh, oh, my studio is a fucking wreck. I don't know why. I didn't really do anything. Did I put him in a box? Shit. That's disconcerting. Uh, why wouldn't it be Under here? The hat. I just checked. Yeah. 
I can show him a helmet. <laughs> I don't know where he went. Oh. Anyways, I'll have to find Mika Lobio. He's flying around here somewhere. Here's a cool helmet we made, though. If you ever see me in uh, at a show, this is the hat my wife wears. As that girl up there on the tapestry. Actual steel. Uh, I do. I have a dedicated studio. This is a three-car garage that's uh, kind of a wedge shape. So it's got 11-foot ceilings that go down to 8.5-foot, and, and it's about 1,300 square feet. So we are in 500 square feet of workspace. The middle bay is a 500 square foot gallery, and then the final uh, bay is a uh, uh, guest room. So, is my audio is it glitchy? I charged my mic. I'm wondering if it might be just the internet. Okay, just you, Nana. <laughs> All right. Grab some ink here. I'm just going to detail out some of the stuff down here uh, just around this area, and then we'll get to sketching on the new one. And, uh, yeah, this week I'll get back into the swing of things. Um, I got a couple of emails about where the hell I was, and, and, and uh, I, re I actually I really appreciate it. So thank you guys for, uh, for looking out and making sure I, I didn't just uh, fall off the face of the planet. I'm not one of those guys. Let's see, that's a number two. Let's wash this guy out, get a paper towel. But, you know, had to take a couple days. And I'll tell you, I was absolutely terrified at, at, at taking this much time off. Oh, you were the one who messaged me. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, dude, let me tell you, I haven't taken, like, a vacation where I haven't done anything in probably 15 years, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't, you know. Like, most of my vacations are just traveling around the country from show to show, and we have so much fun at the rock shows, that's just kind of, you know, I don't know. That is my vacation. I mean, I don't work in a cubicle, so. But yeah, it, it was, uh, it was interesting. It was good to see everybody, but, uh, I mean, there was a day where I literally drove from my in-law's house. They had a big to uh, poker tournament going on amongst the family members, and then I just said, I got to get out of here, and I drove like a half hour just to get coffee, because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do, um, I've never had that much time off, and I don't think I want that much time off again, ever, <laughs> no retirement for Sean. work me, baby, yeah, no retirement for Sean, Oh, I would die immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I'd get like a retirement party and then just like pass on the next day. <laughs> or just drink myself to death at the uh, party. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Oh, this is good. Purple prism. Woo! Purple prism. Purple Prism, kind of a lame package. Looks like something the government would give you if it's, yeah, you know. It smells amazing, though. Yeah. <laughs> I know some people who have gone into a depressed state from not working. Yeah. Yeah, your grandpa's 83 still works because retirement is boring. It is. I don't, and I don't have a job. You know, I mean, I, unless I, like, chop my arm off, I mean, I, I really can't stop, you know painting or who knows yeah I just don't see the fun in retirement I can already I already know that I you know may, maybe a little bit more traveling I could see maybe doing that exploring some places but even when I get there what the hell am I gonna do you know whether I'm sitting around doing nothing in Spain or in Washington uh, not my thing definitely not my thing that's a lot of cool yeah, but I'm also not like a farmer's guide, do the tour group, <laughs> you know, like. Just, just experiencing all the ridiculous art that's in Europe yeah. alone is, you know, like. I'd probably just carry a flask around and just drink everywhere and 
look at statues and shit. I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, why not? I mean, is there a... <clears throat> that's a, I mean, because, you know, when I mostly go on tour, or what I do when I go on tour... <clears throat> oh, Cog Whistle, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Is I, I pull into a town, and the first thing we do is, is Google best dive bars in uh, Savannah, New Orleans, wherever. I mean, you know, wherever we're at. And that usually... I like doing that because it usually adds uh, or introduces me to the locals. That'll tell me where all the cool shit is anyway. So, But, I, you know, I've toured with people that want to go sightsee every, you know, waking moment. And I'm like, it's cool and all, but sometimes I want to leave the town and be like, what did I see there? Uh, the end. <laughs> Domestic abuse in the inside of 40 bars. I don't know. Like, yeah, like, I mean, Savannah, we took the ghost tour. So, you know, or if I do one big touristy thing and then, uh, then that gives me justification to just like party the rest of the time. But, so I was gone for a week and a half. What did I miss? Anything good? Any, any... Any twitchery? Who the hell were you guys watching? Oh my god, it must have been terrible. <laughs> San Diego Comic Con was last week. I'll see an images from that during the reunion. I was like, man, my first time in 18 years I didn't do the Comic Con. And that felt wonderful. <laughs> It's kind of one of them things that you go to it so much and nothing really changes. So I'm sure if I go back in like four years, I'll be like, whoa, it's a whole new ball game," Or something like that. I was going insane not having a late night stream to watch. Yeah, you know, me too. <laughs> I was drinking with my brother-in-laws and singing karaoke and... What else was I doing? That's about it. But it's funny how being not really stuck, but just hanging out in one spot for that many days is like... It, it makes me worried. <laughs> Yeah, so nothing wrong with me, just a family reunion and lots of business stuff going on. Because my studio is fairly young as far as a, a studio, so I mean, I've been in the game a long time, but I'm trying to build up the studio and, you know... So you'll, you'll hear a lot about it over the next few weeks as I talk, you know, and it'll be good business advice. I don't mind talking about the, you know, the bullshit you got to go through to set up manufacturing and signing artists and doing all that stuff. So, cause I think it'll, it'll be interesting content, but, uh, we're setting up a video blog. I actually, um, Sugar and I have been going through a lot of other people's like social media stuff and video blogs and all that. And I think what we're, working on right now, um, the plan is to take all my social media and uh, film little videos and talk about the paintings and what I'm doing, but force everybody over to Twitch. So, so I'm going to use this as my main platform because it's an actual, you know, viable form of social media. And Zuckerberg lost $16 billion today, so probably why every two minutes I got an ad on Facebook saying, do you want to boost a post? <laughs> Zuckerberg lost money. He's not feeling well. Whole well, family reunion to me is boring because I'm not really close to it. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm close to my family. I, you know, uh, well, it's mainly my wife's family. Uh, my family is on the East coast and I had two people come out for the whole reunion. So, you know, he got the suck. <laughs> um, but they're fun. My wife's family is definitely fun. Like, you know, the more outdoorsy type family that my family was not, you know, I grew up in a pretty, like, we're going to the beach for two weeks or, you know, this summer. And then dad goes back to work at the office, but he's got a boat. We went crabbing. You could walk right out on the shore and grab some oysters and fry them up. And so food was good. Yeah, so definitely did a lot of brainstorming on, on uh, some cool stuff we're trying to uh, come up with. So hopefully over the next... Well, I know over, over the next few weeks we'll start really beefing up. I'll, I'll try and get my Discord up and running. We want to get the... Get some new perks. Um, I know on my website we're talking about a subscription service and offering up some really cool uh, limited edition art and giveaways. All good times. And the big thing is trying to figure out when I leave at the end of August for tour, how do I keep streaming? And what technology do I need to be able to, uh, uh, to, be able to stream at a rock show without it being all jittery and because 17 or 150,000 people are on their cell phones at the same time, so. Because if you think one week without me was long, I'm on the road for two months. <clears throat> How many hours do you work on art per week? Um, not enough. <laughs> uh, since I started doing Twitch, I mean, we're talking probably maybe 20 hours a week. Let's see. I mean, if I'm doing, yeah, at minimum. I paint pretty fast, though, so, well, this doesn't look fast, but. But I have, um, but it goes in waves too. So depending on, you know, um, since I do have kind of a set schedule with when I'm touring and when I'm uh, putting out new products and well, that's kind of throwing a, not a wrench in the works, but in, um, it's making me reassess how I, you know, uh, when I paint and whatnot and how many hours and, you know, cause usually it's, it's I'll paint a lot in the winter to get ready for spring tour. And then I'll paint, um, a bunch in the summer to get ready for fall tour. So it was always that nice, you know, I, you know, I, I would paint a lot more right before. And then you got to figure, okay, it's going to take a week to shoot everything, a week to print everything, um, depending who my uh, printing company is I use. So I, uh, so some weeks, yeah, it could be 30, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, whatever. I mean, I've done some pretty insane sessions and, other times, um, it may be 10 hours that week because I'm busy uh, writing proposals up or whatnot. But but hopefully that'll change in the next uh, coming months where I won't have to. I'll have people to do that shit for me. So. What are you going to do for tour? Will you still stream or you take time off? Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. I, I want to stream. I do want to continue it because I want to bring people on the road and I want to show them the whole process of now that you've seen me create these paintings, let me show you how we tour and sell it. And then, you know, because one of the whole purposes of me streaming is also to pass on my business knowledge to, to artists as well. And 
um, and allow them to see my journey as far as going, you know, becoming an established artist and, and, um, and taking the 13 years that I've been professional and really bumping up the, the game with uh, everything else that I've been doing. But I want to use this as a, as a teaching module, you know, in order to uh, hopefully inspire other artists and get them to kind of go, oh, yeah, we, I could do that. So it, it, uh, will I stream? Yes. All comes down to the technology. Um, and it really just, I've, I've talked to the concession or the uh, uh, promoters of the concerts just to try and say, hey, look, is there anything you can do as far as dedicated Wi-Fi? Do I need to get one of those suitcase units with like dual modems? I mean, there, there's a whole slew of, uh, of options. So do I need to hire somebody who, who just knows all that shit, which is usually probably the best way, but. Yeah, no, I'd love to. I'd love to stream the booth during the day and have people, you know, just watch and um, watch the, the customers come up. And um, I do live paint at the booth, so I'd like to stream that as well. And that's usually a sizable painting. Uh, last year we did an eight foot tall by four foot wide a sheet of plywood. So basically, if I grabbed a really nice sheet of plywood at Home Depot and primed it and uh, my buddy Kai Martin and I did a collaboration at Louder Than Life of uh, Alice getting tattooed by the Jabberwocky. And I can't wait to get this Alice series done because I'm kind of tired of the subject matter. <laughs> I want to get back to that big painting of all the uh, whales and military vehicles and Which is on the way. I don't like to promise when I'm going to stream it because things change and like I said with what I have going on right now. I want to work on you with a comic but I can't afford you. You know what I do? Most people can't afford me. <laughs> no. um, for me it's time man. I mean if, if even if it takes a few years if I get to the point where I'm you know the business is running itself and I've got the time. I mean, I definitely will pick up some projects where it's uh, more of a passion project than worried about you know, worrying about getting paid for it. So, um, artists have done that in the past before. Business owners do it. I mean, I don't see why it can't be replicated in the art world. And I mean, I've definitely done some collaboration where I haven't worried about. Um, I was just talking uh, to my wife last night about the uh, this guy, Dirty Kevin, a uh, really cool artist out of San Diego now. It was funny because I came from, I, I was living in San Diego and drove up to San Francisco uh, once a month for about a week. I did some nightclub events and, and whatnot, and I'm painting off camera. Shit. Um, and I met, uh, I got booked for this club on a Wednesday night. At, uh, it was Icon Lounge at the time. It's now called F8. So I went in and I set up and then this, uh, you know, as it was starting, this artist comes up and he's like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm Dirty Kevin, man. I'm the resident artist that's usually here on Wednesdays. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know they had art. I was like, I just, my buddy or who I just met had um, uh, reached out to some clubs to get me some live art gigs. And uh, they just said, yeah. So even though, you know, I was there to sell and, and do my own thing and whatnot, I, I invited him up on, on the canvas and said, well, what do you do? And he's like, well, I can do some cool lettering, you know, behind the painting you're working on. And I said, well, let's do it, you know. And we've known each other ever since and have exchanged art and ideas. And, and uh, um, but yeah, stuff like that happens. It all, you know, it doesn't all come down to money, but, you know, gotta, you know people got to eat, but. But yeah, I was just like, this is your night. I didn't know. So why don't you hop on the canvas and collaborate with me? And, and it ended up being a really cool painting, really cool night. And we uh, and we ended up selling the original. So because sometimes just just two artists collaborating live, people will buy that more than just one artist, just for the novelty of it. You get a two for one. I don't know 
what that is. Okay. Uh, obviously, if you paid someone, it'd be pretty upset to him. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and that's where you should go. You should you got to find someone that's that's able to um. Uh, collaborate with you. You know, like a, an artist. You know, find someone who draws in the style you want, and they're willing to put their blood, sweat, and tears into something that. Um, and then you guys get paid on the back end. I mean, that's how I think most comic books <laughs> have started. It's just, you know, two guys working on a book in between family and day jobs and whatever else. And that in itself is, is payment. The fact that you're actually doing something with your creative talents and not, you know, like most people just sitting around going, eh, it just wasn't meant to be. Because that's really lame. You know, I mean, I, I wrote my all my own books and illustrated them, but I was... Uh, my writing was incredibly fucking weird, so, uh, you know. I don't even know if I was... I mean, I guess I was an okay writer. I'd have to get back into it if I wrote my own book. I was, uh... I was good at writing, but it was very weird, very stream of consciousness, very non-traditional, but it fit what I was going for, so, um, but there are options, my, no, my hands are going, okay. Like riding a bicycle, not streaming for a week and then getting back in. Yeah, it's tough, but they're out there because, in all honesty, if you're not willing to, uh, you know, maybe collaborate with someone, most of these guys are not getting their book out. And they're just going to sit around and work at Starbucks for the rest of their life. No offense to any baristas that are watching right now. I partook the other day. Um, but you know what I'm saying, people waiting around for that big opportunity instead of uh, going out there and grabbing it, you know, those, those are the ones who are going to succeed. That's what I did. I published my first book when I was 15, never looked back, you know, just made 400 bucks or sold 400 copies. So that's, that was 800 bucks. I was selling them for two bucks each. So, but I went for it. I knew I wasn't a high caliber artist. I, I knew I wasn't, uh, pro quality, I did, but it didn't matter. I had something to say and I wanted to say it. And um, I also, when my first book came out professionally, I did get approached by a few writers. Uh, um, this guy, Ulf, over in Germany, Bremen, Germany, uh, we did a little, we did like a little six page comic. It was very David Lynch, uh, very weird, but he wrote like a little six page, like poetic storyline. I did it. We put it out as a mini book. It was a good way to see if we could work together. Um, uh, you know, we, we didn't do anything again after that, even though I liked his writing. I think life just got in the way with him, and, and I was on to other books. But um, but even if it's like little small projects to test and see if you are compatible with a, with an artist, or no, more importantly, if the artist can get the fucking work done. Because you want to know what's tougher than getting an artist that'll work for free? One will work. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Even when you're paying them. Even when you're paying them, you know. Believe me. Oh, I got, I got stories. We, we all got stories. I've been that story. Believe me. I have many, many projects that I've... I've gotten paid for back in the day and, and it just took forever to get them done and and including some pretty prominent uh, children's book titles that I was working on that, you know, I just, I don't know, I wasn't in the headspace. I, my work ethic wasn't, I was a hard worker, but I didn't know how to motivate myself a lot. So it was, uh, sitting down at the drawing table felt very, like, yeah, they paid me, but now I want to draw my own shit. <laughs> like, where's that job where I can just say thanks for the money and then draw my own shit? Okay, that doesn't mean it. But yeah. <clears throat> Is it Dolly? Oh, thanks for the follow. 
Awesome, awesome. So yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that's nine, you know, a very large percentage of being an artist, finding an artist is, uh, can they get the work done? Did you ever check that digital webbing site? Um, it's Roger, right? I think I remember. Um, to see if they ever restarted. I, I, I keep forgetting to check myself, but, um, and I think even DeviantArt, as much as it, you know, you might be hard pressed to find someone other than an anime comic artist, but they do have a, uh, um, they used to have a section where it was uh, paid and unpaid gigs. So you could literally go to a section and say, this gig is strictly for back end pay, or this is, or you go to the other section and it's strictly for uh, for paid gigs. So I commissioned an artist and they haven't finished in a month. Yeah. It does happen. And it depends on the timeline. I mean, I have, uh, like I said, I still to this day have projects that were commissioned that are, you know, they're just, they're taking forever, you know, and, 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 and a lot of times it has to do with just the, uh, finding the time and being able to balance the projects between the bill paying money and whatever, but it's, you know, the stuff has to get done. I mean, I've, but a lot of them are, are larger scale paintings, so. Little shadow lines there, like texture lines. Alright. Where am I at? 94 followers. I wonder if we can hit 100. Maybe tonight, the night. Is that Phil Collins? What was that song? Tonight, tonight, tonight. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Smashing Pumpkins. No, it's like an 80s song. Yeah, that's him. It is Phil Collins. Yeah. There you go. No, God, no. Not Smashing Pumpkins. You know. Cool music. That guy's voice. He was like the 90s Getty Lee. He was like, why did you let this man sing? <laughs> It's funny because when I put in tonight, tonight, I'll yeah. stop first. Smashing pumpkins, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Off Siamese Dream, yeah. Number one record label deal. What? Uh, huh? And Genesis, not Phil Collins. Which Genesis, okay, alright. Phil Collins, but not just Phil Yeah. Collins. This is the studio. <laughs> and then he proceeds to tell Barbara to do something very vile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not even a definition of what music is. Here, buy some music. Yes. Ooh. The the Genesis song. Yeah. Okay. No, not the Okay. Like their big album came out, and then you're like, oh, they had a couple other albums before that that were actually decent, like, yeah, or a little more like, you know. Yeah. I didn't mind it when it came out. I, I, I'll admit that. Yeah, I listened to it. I thought it was pretty rad, but. 
Yeah. You know, like, it was seriously Like, the whole album is really good. Yeah. Where am I at? Poker chips. Actually, I think I want to, uh... Let's, let's get some little lines going down here. Oh, time to crash the computer. He says that, but it's always an excuse just to smoke weed while the computer reboots. It's rebooting. <laughs> yeah. No, I just press play and walk away. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same thing. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. Hours. Yo, what's happening? Welcome. Good to see your name appear in my chat window. <laughs> I am back. Back, back, back. Oh, I'm so jacked on coffee, too, right now. Oh, really? Is there more? Yeah. You brewed like 40 ounces of coffee. <laughs> you know? I think that thing only holds 32, but... Yeah. <laughs> That's just the bulb part. <laughs> No oh, shit. <laughs> That's right. Press off. Yo, LOL. That says it all. Mmm. <laughs> that is some liquid crack right there. But I have a long night ahead of me. So I'm going to stream, uh, I don't know how long, a couple hours, more, maybe midnight, maybe one. I don't know. I got an all-nighter to pull. But I got to work on some sketches for... Um, for the 50th anniversary of Woodstock. I'm so jacked on coke. No, I'm not jacked on coke. Hey, someone else said the sound is odd, and I don't know if that's me or the music, or uh, but somebody else said it was fine. Well, it was odd. I don't know. Yeah. Is I mean what? Like crack? Wait, who's talking? <laughs> Crack? I like crack. No. I mean, what? <laughs> Mike may have an odd connection. Do I sound, well, abnormally weird to everyone? or I don't know. Um, it's on. Here, let me, uh, hello, 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 hello. Let me turn on my iPad. Sounds fine on my iPad. Maybe it's Apple products. If you're not on an Apple product, I sound I sound like shit. You're saying it's a conspiracy? Yeah. Just turn down your quality. That's what I did and it fixed it. Exactly. Lower your expectations here. And the stream will be beautiful. <laughs> I don't know who you think you're watching. <laughs> like, this isn't the Al Green painting channel. <laughs> what? <laughs> the soulful sounds. All right, dipping into the dime bag. Oh, dipping into the dime bag. What's the name of that? Day Tripper. Day Tripper is the weed, the strain that Sugar's trying right now. And I believe this is the one that bought because it looked so fucking awesome in the package. It looked awesome in a package. Which which we've been we've been Oh yeah. You guys see that? Look at the color on that. Yeah. That's good shit. It's like Mardi Gras. <laughs> Purple, gold, and green. <laughs> what do you mean banned? It's legal up here. Yeah, that purple is true. And and weed doesn't I weed can't fall can't possibly fall under self destructive behavior. It's medicine. Yeah. And in fact on the Red Bull music channel, who's that guy? The the vocoder dude, the whatever the the I'm on a boat, motherfucker. Oh, T-Pain. T-Pain was smoking on Twitch. 
Now, he probably has a little bit more pull than I do. <laughs> he probably doesn't give a fuck as much. He's got more to lose. Great. I got, you know, uh, banned off Twitch. He's like, I'll just go count my money. Oh, my God. <laughs> wipe God, wipe my tears with smoke weed. <laughs> wipe my tears with some hundies. <laughs> It'd be a good line of underwear, hundies. Just different various underwear with hundred dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> Print it on it. A hundred bucks. Yeah, they'd sell for a hundred bucks a pair. Get your hundies today. I thought it was prohibited on Twitch. Oh, I don't know. Is it? Can someone look that up? I mean, I don't want to get banned, you know. Well, is it smoking it or is it yeah, like is it showing? Yeah, is it smoking it or showing it? I'm smoking over there. He's, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't doesn't smoke it over there. Yeah. I'm not on camp. I'm not on Twitch, but I'm smoking. Yeah, I'm smoking. We're promoting good meta medical practices. And technically, I'm the one streaming, not sugar. <laughs> the game! Sorry, that was loud. Did that sound come through okay? If it's legal in your state, they don't care. Okay. Sorry, Alabama. Sorry, Alabama. <laughs> Plus, it's the West Coast. You start banning people up and down the West Coast, you'll lose half a Twitch. We have a very large population out here. <laughs> there it is. Yes, yes. I forgot about my... Whoa, shit. I don't know what I just did. I did something. We'll do that and a little bit of that. and There we go. You're good, man. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. I missed everyone. I scared a few people. A few close calls. Some of you found yourself crying in a cold shower on a Sunday night. Some of you found yourself crying in a cold shower every night. <laughs> oh, later, sugar. You'll be back. <laughs> a sub! Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. And did you sub at work? Did you take time out of work to sub? Because that's equally fucking cool. <laughs> or even more cool, not equally. Alright, there you go. I wish, uh, I think I could do more emotes, right? I just gotta pay for them or some shit? I don't know. I wanna come up with a bunch of them. I'd like to come up with a bunch where I just, like, don't have to... You guys don't have to talk, you just, like... It's all, like, hieroglyphics and shit. That'd be amazing. Subbed at work. There you go. I'm stealing jobs from America. <laughs> well, thank you again. I really, really appreciate that. And now, yes, you get to use the, uh, the badass emote. The little devil tongue. I will have one coming out with a whiskey glass, so... You could do one for each tier. Oh, okay. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I was thinking, too, for the, um, I don't know if any other creatives have done this or, or do do this, but I know they do the emote thing for subs, but do they, uh, do they ever do, like, a Patreon thing where they mail out prints or do, like, if someone subbed for 25 bucks a month and I send them, uh, two prints every month of my uh, new releases, I mean, I, I think that'd be a sweet fucking deal, but, uh. I just haven't seen anything like that, but I know people do, like, giveaways and whatnot, so some do. Yeah, I, you know, because we were thinking about it today. We're actually putting together packages for some of my, like, higher-end clients as far as coming into more, you know, sponsor the studio now instead of just the artist, and then they would get some, uh, they'd get, like, every re a print of every release that I did this year plus, like, a like a hand painted bourbon barrel or something like that. Like something where I can offer people like just some really cool, unique prizes. So, or pieces of art. Well, I don't have a, a Patreon. Uh, I, I was talking about using my uh, Twitch sub. Like if someone subs 25 bucks a month, they get 
like all my releases this year as a print, two at a time per month, or or like in the last five weeks, I've done seven paintings, so I could like send all of them out, or because I know I'm going to keep painting. So if there's anything in particular you guys would like to see, let me know. I mean, on my shandichagart.com too, I got tons of products and merch I may throw out. I got tapestries, face shields for festivals and and uh, dab mats, stuff like that that I could also use as as uh, giveaways. So. I still love that fucking mosquito. Uh, mosquito. <clears throat> I do too. And it's funny, my buddy who I haven't talked to in a uh, pretty long time, I just hired him today to start calling smoke shops and whatnot. And and first thing he said to me was, uh, he's like, why don't you paint that mosquito? And I'm like, there you go. <laughs> I go, yeah, that was a fun one. I absolutely love that. Uh, I just vectorized that one too. And I'm trying to see if the factory... Like how many uh, this patch company? Like how many, how many colors can they do, and and how do we get it to to look just right? So I'm trying to develop a patch out of that mosquito. I really like it. If anything, uh, it's right behind me. It will be a die cut sticker. So and I'll say you know I'll put together package deals too. Like if it's uh, I want to make sure it all pertains to Twitch. So a lot of what I paint on here, I'll you know come up with cool stuff to. Uh, to give away so but I'll do like an official thing in a few weeks we're working on it one of the 48 billion things on my plate right now so but I appreciate you guys chiming in and tuning in and and being concerned for me when I'm gone When I know you were really going, that motherfucker, I watched him for weeks, and I followed him, and then he disappeared. <laughs> I'm sure there's artists that have done that, so. Like I said, I, I may be tweaking my schedule a little bit because of the East Coast people. Um, I may stream three nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for the next couple weeks in order the, for me to get a lot more um, just, just grunt work done that I have to get done, but I may do it longer. So I may um, come on at like 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. and then stream until 2 or 3 a.m. instead of uh, five nights a week from 9 p.m. to whenever. So. And just kind of testing to see if, like, you know, if I am on earlier, too, if, um, uh, if I do pick up more of a, a crowd at those hours or... But I'll still be a late night, you know, stream when I when I am doing it. So, but I just I don't want it to turn into uh, like when I used to paint live at nightclubs six nights a week, where I would have like one day to kind of recover and get all my shit done during the day, and then not um, have anything just you know really cool to stream that night. So. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Those prints come um, signed and numbered. So I will sign that bad boy for you, and I will throw in a goodie. Do I have the goodies here? No, I got little uh, Mad Hatter teapot dab rig um, stickers. So I'll throw a couple stickers in there for you as well. Yeah, I want to make I want to get a tapestry done of that mosquito. I think that thing would do really well at the rock shows, but I just want one on the wall too. So <laughs> it's gonna be cool. There we go. All right. So I've just been noodling around down here while I've been talking. The trees, the cards, getting all the detail work done here. Um, uh, jump back into some highlights in a minute, and this piece will be, uh, we'll finish this piece up, and then, um, uh, what you call it, we'll, uh, we'll jump over to the sketchbook for a little while, and, and maybe flesh out a, uh, Subway sandwich artist. We all know him. So I want to take the caterpillar, and I want to make him into a, uh, sandwich artist at Subway. So, you know, two weeks. No problem. I'm going to be around, I think, for the next two weeks. We'll be all good. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you guys have any ideas for that, feel free to throw them out in chat. Like, basically, it's like he'll be holding maybe a ketchup and a mustard and a mayonnaise, and he'll have ham in his hand, and, and there'll be a big hoagie in front of him. It's got to be another vertical format one, so it fits the genius pipe, uh, which is 
Where's my genius pipes? Which is this bad boy here. So the image has to go within here. Doesn't have to fit perfectly. Like this will obviously go out a little bit, which I do like. But yeah, <clears throat> I'll give him like the, the goofy visor. Hey, he'll have a visor too, but it won't be clear. And then, um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, maybe maybe the sneeze guard or no? Maybe we're we're, we're going to be back there with him. So subway sandwich artist. That's yeah, all right. Well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe you can give me some insight into like if I'm you know like oh no, those aren't standard issue must, uh, mustard dispensers. Uh, you got to change that shit. You know. <laughs> but I just uh, and and this was my first concept for the the caterpillar. If you have an idea for like, okay, so the idea is we're taking the Wonderland characters and we're just a recap and uh, putting them in real jobs. Like they came through, came back through the rabbit hole with Alice and they got stuck here and now they have to find real employment or in her case, she's collecting unemployment because so, uh, she's old. So if you have any ideas for what the Caterpillar uh, and more importantly, what can the Cheshire cat do? You know, my only idea is he's hanging in the window at a Chinese restaurant or something. I don't know. That might be a little off color to <laughs> put on a pipe. But I need a job for the uh, the Cheshire cat for sure. Uh, did you do prints for the whale? I did uh, over SeanDietrichArt.com. I think there's prints available for everything that I've painted except for the except for the devil with the slugs coming out of his mouth. But I think the whale, the mosquito, the shamanthropede, the mad hatter with the honey all over his hat and the honeybee and the uh, fear and loathing uh, Hunter S. Thompson with the bur uh, bourbon barrels are all on there. So um, where's sugar at? Oh, if you sign up for the newsletter too, there's a shipping code for free shipping. So the prints are on there. You can get, you can get the poster prints, but there's also like full size prints on canvas, wood, metal, whatever you're looking for. Um, and then when he gets back, I think it's just free shipping or something like that. The Maneki, Maneki Nekis, they think they're called, or Maneki Nuga Nugas, or uh, here, hold on, I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Boom! <laughs> this dude. Right? Yep. <laughs> we actually bought that for the booth. Uh, so we had that on the booth at, at, at the rock shows. That is a fantastic idea, actually. Uh, all right, top of the list. You got it. Yeah, you didn't think I was going to pull one of them out. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I think we we're in Maryland, or maybe we were at a Chinese restaurant, and we saw, they had like 15 of them going, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, they must need some luck. But that place had been the best Chinese for like 30 years, so I think they work. And, uh, so we went out, <laughs> we went out and bought one for the booth, and, uh, we did very well this year, so I believe in the power of the one-armed cat that's telling the crowd to bounce or whatever. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that for the Cheshire cat. Hell yeah. <laughs> Just think about the setting. Like, if I did them, like, really big here and then and then have, like, Maybe below him, just some like Asian flowers or orchids or something that kind of surround him, and you know, like they would have it set up on a little altar-looking thing when you walk in the door. That'd be kind of cool. We'll have to look at some pictures. <clears throat> and that's a little more pleasant than being uh, eaten at the restaurant. Whee! Cigars and there we go. Love that visor. 
It was so fun. It was kind of a, uh, let's see if this shit will work. I knew it would. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I had. There was a trade show last week, too, I'm normally at, that I had to, you know, definitely, uh, I was at the family reunion. But I was thinking, too, is, is it'll be a little bit easier for me to stream at the trade shows, too. So I just re-signed today with OCB Rolling Paper. So they're the biggest rolling paper company in the world. I do all their trays, their rolling trays, the one that Sugar has somewhere. Um but they just released a new tray at the trade show I was unable to be at. But I do live painting at their booth at the Champ Show, which will be in Denver in uh, October. But I'm, I'm doing something called Smoker Friendly in Denver this uh, August. And it's a, a kind of a roll-your-own, uh, rolling paper type deal trade show. And I'll, I'll be um, – we're launching a new tray, and I'll be – I'll be there signing autographs and trays and whatnot and handing them out. So I'll, uh, but I'll stream from there and take you guys around to some of the and show you some of the art that I've done. Um, but yeah, when I'm on the road, I definitely want to make sure that I'm able to still stream and um, and I'll be live painting at most of these events. So I'll, I'll keep it interesting. It won't be like me eating a fish sandwich or some shit like that. Like, I've seen some pretty fucking weird, like, IRL uh, streams on, on Twitch, and I'm like, people watch this shit? I mean, one guy was streaming his honeymoon, and I'm like, that seems kind of weird. Like, your wife's into that? Like, shouldn't you be like, you just got married. Shouldn't you just be chilling with her? <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe I'm too much of a traditionalist. I don't know. Whee! All right. Oh, I moved your cat. Sorry, it's right there. Because I threw it out to chat, I said, how do I do the Cheshire cat? And the girl's like, boom, and I said, oh, fuck, that's awesome. So let's do it. Uh, as the Cheshire, that'd be rad. So I had to, I said, you mean this guy? You know, <laughs> I'm like, See? Damn right. I told him we went to a Chinese restaurant and there was like 86 of them going off on one shelf. <laughs> but they were the best Chinese for like 30 years, so it must have worked. There we go. The battery was dying. Oh, the battery was dying. All right. We now have our luck. There you know. The girl. Did I say the girl? Did I say that? I, sometimes I assume. Um, sorry. If I guess you're a dude. <laughs> Sometimes it comes out. Your name, your name sometimes uh, will uh, alert me, and, and, and I'm usually wrong, so my apologies for that. <laughs> I'm assuming gender on name. That can get me in big trouble. <laughs> All right. Oh, what I'm painting off camera. Sorry, guys. I gotta start awarding points or some shit for uh Yeah, oh I've done it several times. I think I've probably called everybody here that's a boy or a uh or a girl or the opposite gender. I'm just gonna call you guys the thing from now on. <laughs> yeah. And this one thing <laughs> all right, can you guys see that? Yeah. I assume no dude would know about this cat. But then, there's two dudes sitting in a room with that cat. <laughs> and I'm not the high one. <laughs> there we go. Get a little ridge on those chips. <laughs> The thing, thing one, thing two. There we go. Uh, I can't wait to get this one on this pipe. It's gonna look fucking fantastic.
And are we good on the, uh, what are we good on? We're good on the Caterpillar being the sandwich artist, I think. I think we're good for that. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to go with Sandwich Artist. I don't think he needs to be the hand job giver at a uh, massage parlor. I think we're going a little too... Could he be <laughs> He could. He could have, like, mustard and a dick and ketchup and and pickles and another dick and, yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of phallic food items that can be incorporated into this... Uh, all right, so he's not the massage parlor, but we will add a few <coughs> extra phallic items in his hand. Let's do that. I think we can do that. Why not? <coughs> and what's even the, the, the mayo and the mustard and the yeah. uh, oil and the vinegar and all of those things alone are all very phallic in the subway. Well, and... Uh, It'll be awesome because he'll have all these phallic things and you smoke it. <laughs> oh, 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 so I could even position some in the drawing so if someone puts it up to their mouth to smoke it, it creates, wow. Wow. creates a very nice illusion. <laughs> well, and a, a, a foot long. A foot long. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> No. Well, maybe it'll be like outside the painting or what doesn't go on the pipe. Like we'll extend it out and he'll be like, foot long, ma'am, or something like that. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> we can have a story outside of what actually goes on the pipe, so that's no problem. All right. God damn it. I keep forgetting where I'm making. For oh, and I got my eat. Pray and slay coffee mug. I talked about this on another stream as to why Walmart would carry a cup like that. Like slay the day or we've had so many debates as to why people or why they put that cup out. Like I'll have a little lunch. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to go out and butcher people. It sounds. I don't know. Doesn't sound very Walmart. <laughs> Let's get, I'm going to darken this in because I don't want that to be. Um, yeah, that'll work. And what's your coffee cup say? Uh, Hustling. Perfect for a guy who sits and makes music. That summer I was selling doors door to door. That was one of the greatest. I forgot what that commercial was. It was awesome though. It was like this 15 year old kid and he literally had like a front door he would carry around <laughs> trying to sell it door to door. Be-doop. Uh, let's see. All right. We got cigarettes, poker chips. I like that. It sets her back a, a little bit more. Moving forward, I'll put some highlights on the chips there, too, to get a little... Uh, like these little 1950s patterns. And I'm going to go... Let's outline these. I definitely want to go a little darker under here. Start putting in some of these, the blackest blacks. What my art teacher used to yell at me for all the time. There's not enough blackest blacks. There we go. Doing now. She's probably dead. She's she was like seventy something, you know. Exactly. Miss Lagarde. I had nightmares. I had nightmares, Bobby. 
I had her for all four years of high school. And even when I finished Art 3, they were like, we swear, take Art 4, it'll be advanced curriculum, even though you'll be in the Art 3 class because there's only four of you. And day one, today we're going to draw an orange. I'm like, I, the fuck I am. There will be no orange drawing for Sean Dietrich. Now he draws a killer orange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking orange up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I understand why you, you know, she had me do that for shading and lighting and all that. But three years of it, I get it. I can draw an orange. I could, I could be, I could be doing posters for Tropicana right now. Like, but I'm an art four, and she's supposed to be. Yeah, you're right. Those aren't oranges. <laughs> Those are orange colored orbs. But yeah, you're supposed to prep me for my art career in the real world. Like, uh, yeah. So all I could tell colleges I could do was draw oranges. There we go. Nice black shadow underneath this. I'm a little worried where that Miko Obio went. Painted that damn thing. I had it all ready to show everyone. And it done disappeared. Looks great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like this one a lot. I didn't know how it was going to transpire from the sketch to the... Because uh, the sketch wasn't really thought out. <laughs> I drew it. I rendered it. I, I knew what it would look like, but there was no coloring in my head at the time, and I was just kind of like, eh. Ah. But, uh, but I think we all pulled it off. I did? Hey, Sugar found it. I put it in the product vacuum. We have a light box to, uh. Yeah, there's Michelobio. So, this is a hand cast resin figure that I, I painted. And I still got a little bit of detail work to do, but that's Michelobio. So, that tapestry behind me is, uh, this is one of the space aliens. So it's hand poured resin, and I keep like the camera is stationary. I don't know why it keeps floating. And then this is the saucer. So this guy's name is Rust Bucket because he just drives like an old their equivalent of like a uh, AMC a pacer or a dumpster. A dumpster. And then you put it in, and there's your. Uh... So I'm going to be experimenting with doing more like figures like this of my characters and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like, he's driving a Pinto. Yeah, so. <laughs> but that's Michelobio. And I got the name. It's a combination of uh, Michelangelo, lobe, like the brain, and uh, Michelob beer. So I just combined them all, Michelobio, and, and mushed them all together to get his name. So, And I don't think I was drinking a Michelob because I don't drink that schwill. But, um, he drinks the water. <laughs> I, yeah, I drink the good schwill. <laughs> But I think when I said Michelangelo, it may have it may have come out Michelobio. Another vocal fallacy, of, yeah. More more girl talk. <laughs> but I like the name; it rolls off the tongue nice, Michelobio. And eventually I want to get into some crazy, crazy figurines. Like, actually do a figure of Vera jumping like that. Or, um, oh man, you see so many of them at that uh, Gentle Giant or Silent Giant or whatever the, uh, the place that does the amazing figures at Comic-Con. Just insanely detailed. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! 
That's a sneeze. <laughs> Day tripper. Day tripper. It's a sneezy kind of weed. I'm allergic. The sneezy weezer. The sleazy geezer's brother. <laughs> the sneezy weezer. Or whatever, cousin. I just dad. dad. Yeah, the sneezy weezer gave birth to the sleazy geezer. These are all characters that we've come up with, so expect to see them soon in painting, live, animated, whatever. And I have my, so we decided on the website, if you guys go to the website, seandietrickart.com, and you click on one of the prints or, or one of the pieces of artwork, there's a little paragraph that gives you information about the art itself, because I, I like to tell the stories about the art and and there's always like a fun little link to, you know, like for the circus elephant, it's uh, a link to a story about how they hung an elephant once because it killed its owner or whatnot. Um, but we're going to start doing little video versions of those. So um, I employed my 10-year-old daughter and my wife and son, they're going to be creating these backdrops and costumes for me and we're going to film these um, hopefully hilarious videos uh, probably more disturbing once they're filmed you know <laughs> but um, yeah we're going to put together some really cool like promotional videos that you know but all the backdrops are going to be done by my 10 year old and then costuming by my wife so I think it'll be pretty funny but just trying to always come up with unique ways to Promote the art and show you that I'm just a silly bastard with a paintbrush. That's awesome. Okay. Nice. Smoke break. <laughs> Just run it for the next two hours. <laughs> Arpeggio? Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh. Oh, it gets cut off or... Abbreviation, okay. Ah, uh, okay. I would expect nothing less. Yeah. Oh, was that you? No. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. Mmm. Nothing like coffee at 10, 15. Oh, I went, I went inside and filled up my cup and Rachel was standing there and we had to like while we were talking, I drank that whole fucking cup of coffee and I just worked so Oh, she's home? Oh, yeah. Oh, did you tell her I was streaming? Yeah. Oh, okay. They know not to bug me. She's like, <laughs> oh, that's why he didn't well, I didn't know she was home either, you know. That's such a white thing to say, you know. No, she's not saying it like that. Oh, he didn't see through walls? You know? <laughs> not the Superman I married. Yeah, bullshit. Fine. Fuck bullshit. <laughs> he didn't hear the car slowly pull up. Above that music. There we go.
That was cool. It was like a cockroach thinking. These are all like 80s video games. Yeah, well, <laughs> the synth I'm using is actually a recreation of uh, a synth from like the late 70s. So like Defender and Space Invaders. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that one's definitely like Stranger Things, like, the, you know. All that trendy 80s music that's coming back. Yeah, like more like that. That's like a harpsichord. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, similar concepts for sure. And a little yeah, bit uh, here. Fucking uh, Stevie Wonder. Ah. Oh. A mood <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's essentially what uh, what's called an auto walk. So it like it like there we like, go. Makes the the keyboard go whack boom whack whoops whack boom whack boom. Oh uh, okay. Like and that's like high higher ground. That Living like, for the city and he played a clavinet with the fucking Mootron on it for for higher ground. And you guys hear heard it first. A clavinet with a Mootron. Yep. Thank you, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> yeah, Stevie Wonder did some pretty fucking innovative shit. Oh, he is the shit. Hell yeah. All right, let's see here. Just a little touch of black. Put a little hatching in here. I'll jump into some white for some highlights and... We're going to call it done, and then we'll jump over to the sketchbook, and let's plan out. Man, I still want to, I think we're going to do the, uh, I do want to do the, the Caterpillar, but that Cheshire is the uh, hanging tough cat. That sounds great. What's it called, Sugar, the, the Maneki what? Maneki Neko. Maneki Neko, there we go. I dig it. Yeah, that one. Ooh, that green's glowing bright. Did I adjust the... Maybe the lighting's better this time around. Mm -hmm. That's some fucking 80s fuck shit right there. <laughs> That's like 80s sci-fi yeah. transition sound. Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's just like a red and blue light yeah. like flashing and some aliens just like uh, trying to like read, eat someone's brain telepathically. Definitely. I should do some paintings that are stories behind weird sounds and it'll, uh, we can embed a chip in the painting where you can push a button and play the sound. My buddy used to do that with his paintings. He would hide a, uh, a little button in the painting, it was a lot of mixed media shit, so there was a lot of stuff glued to the canvas, but there'd be a button that would work that would light a bunch of stuff up, and uh, you had to find it. I don't know where he is anymore. I could just noodle the shit out of this painting for the next four hours, but... Hey, thanks for hanging. You take care as well, and uh, you know where to find me. I will be here tomorrow. Uh, what is tomorrow, Thursday? Yes. I'll try and hop on a little bit earlier. Try not to scare you. You people. <laughs> But awesome, yes, thanks for hanging out, and um, yeah, it's essentially done. Um, I'm just kind of looking at a little bit of white that I need to add to her lips and whatnot, but um, yeah, we'll move on to uh, the Cheshire next, maybe.
It'd be a bunch of orchids and fish heads laying there. That'd be kind of cool. For like, a, just sad surrealism. I think I dig it. flare. He's got 36 pieces of flare on. Dude, I worked at TGI Friday. <laughs> Did you? I, I never had a job like that. Oh, man. I, I did not have it for very long. Even when I worked at Walmart, I avoided the Walmart cheer. <laughs> oh, the Walmart cheer exists. And believe me. You know what the worst part about a, a job like TGI Fridays is? Yes, the 50s design elements. I adore those. I think they actually make the painting. I think you could kind of have it, and then woo, it adds a little bit of action. What were you saying? The, the worst part about uh, being a waiter at a place like <laughs> TGI Fridays is not the flair. That. They gotta have their own goddamn song. Because it's copywritten. Did you know that? I am not surprised. That's the urban legend going around that it's copywritten, so they can't actually sing happy birthday. It's some happy, happy birthday, birthday, you're old as fucking well, whatever, you know. What's, what's probably really stupid about that? That cheer is cancer, you're right. Did you work at Walmart? Did you, did you or you just walked in at the wrong time because they used to pull those people up front and the ZBW, or, uh, I don't even remember it, but it was just like, I just remember when they were like, you know, associates to the front for the Walmart cheer, like all of a sudden I had diarrhea or something, but I had to hang, oh, in, <laughs> I had to hang in the bathroom for about a half hour because I wasn't about to do that shit. You were there four years. There we go. We have someone that can empathize. <laughs> oh, did I miss the cheer again? <laughs> Life just isn't fair. <laughs> oh, four years too long. Yeah, I know. And, you know, I ended up, because before I went to Walmart, I was a third key manager at a corporate record store. Not a dream job. Uh, I mean, I was 18 years old, and I, I had never had any training in, like, cash flow sheets and all that. Big pain in the ass for, I don't know what the hell they were paying me. It was uh, whatever minimum wage was on the East Coast in 1994. Five, I think, or something like that, but or ninety-four. It's probably like five bucks an hour or something retarded. But oh, it was the worst. So that's why I took the job at Walmart. They were, uh, you know, oh, what do we got? Ninja Boy Deluxe lurking and not helping the cause. You can legally sing it now due to a law change. The one law we didn't need. All right, well there we go. You can legally sing Happy Birthday now. All right. Still, they shouldn't sing Happy Birthday. <laughs> But yeah, and if there's multiple songs, that's crazy. But I, but Walmart was paying like two and a half bucks more an hour for me to like do 50 times less work. And I'm like, done. And I guess they didn't put anybody under 21 in the electronics section. And I was 18 or 19 at the time. So they were like, well, I was 18. But I had come from a record store. So they were like, well, we'll put you in there. And, and that was a disaster. I mean, I was working there with like an 85-year-old dude some old lady who didn't even know what a CD was, and then there was one night manager who was, um, he kind of knew what he was talking about. But this was like, I remember when a 486 computer came out, it was the hot shit. Like, they're bumping the processors up. No more 380, 386s. It was gnarly. And what's funny about that old guy, though, when he would call out, because like when you sold a big TV or something, you had to call out that the uh, over the intercom, like, electronics, leaving, uh, TV, blah, blah, blah. This guy sounded like Frank Sinatra. Like, the whole world would stop when he was calling out a TV or something. And, I mean, 
people would literally stop in the aisle and just look up at the at the speakers and they're like where is that voice coming from i think they thought he lived in the ceiling and and would just call electronics out and he would cash my paycheck for me yeah don't get fired <laughs> i'm lurking too i'm working oh i thought you said you're lurking too long i'm supposed to be working sorry i just glanced real quick but yeah that guy he had been in his bank so long i could give him my paycheck and he would come back with cash and i'm like that's insane he probably started the bank and then retired and went i'm just gonna hang out at walmart Oh, there's so many stories. How about Walmart door greeters? I feel like somebody who, if you're watching and you work there, you know how creepy the door greeters are. We had this one old guy. He was like, you know, people would walk in. Hi, how are you? And then hey, I'd be standing there and he'd be like, hey, Sean, look at that ass. You know, and I'm like, Jesus, man. I won't get fired. I'd have to throat punch my boss to lose my job. <laughs> well, nice to know they have a bar set of what you can and can't do before you get fired. <laughs> and you're welding, right? Did I get that right at least? I forgot to send this to you earlier. Oh, was this Trent Reznor's film career? No. Oh God! What else? Let me miss. Oh, that's funny. When I was 17, I went to get a limp biscuit tattoo, and when they wouldn't let me because I didn't have a guardian's approval, I cried and punched a lamppost. Three months later, I was allowed to take on $119,000 in loans to go to art school. Some guy's comment: Still a better thing to live with for the rest of your life than a limp biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> welding all right all right i'm uh, yeah. i'm getting the feel for the regulars <laughs> it, oh just want to put a few more little flyaways and doohickeys here i like those things yeah just like out of control hairs because you know she's probably been wearing this visor about if not 15 hours probably 15 years there we go and she's got a few flyaways sore hand worth it there you go It's like it's like my son's you know little noise he makes when he is playing Legos. He's just like ee. yeah, I know. It, it's just comforting. It's his autistic noise. <laughs> Kidding, he's not autistic. Kidding. All right, end of the joint, and then we'll put some uh, let's get some smoke going. Ninja Boy Deluxe, thank you for the follow. Sorry, your hand's sore. I don't know if that was a masturbatory reference or <laughs> <laughs> whatever my paintings inspire you to do. <laughs> there we go. All right, there we go, there we go. A little bit, of, a little bit of black smoke there, and then let's uh, put the ink away for now. For now, don't worry, don't worry. And let's get some white paint. Let me grab a dish. Upgraded chinette. Really interesting work, man. Not wank interesting. <laughs> All right, I'm not wank worthy, but hey, man, I appreciate it. Just to say. <laughs> 
Thank you, thank you. I, I try and keep it weird and fresh, and I like, you know, textures and grit and cool stuff. And, and if you guys think I'm pulling it off, I really appreciate it, so. And then, uh, yeah, so this, if, uh, if those are watching and haven't seen what this is, let me grab one with a, a graphic, if I have one. Where's your genius pipe? I gave it to you. I cleaned it up and gave it to you, and you walked away with it. Oh. Who knows where it's at? Well, here's the one. Here, I always pull this one. This is the one that's signed by Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes. Pulling it off. Yeah. I'm pulling off the art. That's a genius pipe. So this image is going to be on the pipe. It's a magnetic pipe, easy to clean. They're my sponsor this year for my art tour. So put your, uh, put your goodies there. Whoop. Light, draw, extinguish. So working on new designs for them uh, for the fall tour this year. Looks awesome, dude. I'm also on team lurk and work. Perfect. That sounds good. I like that, especially when I'm sketching, because when I get into the sketching thing, it might not be as interesting as a color painting, but at least you guys can kind of see some of the process of uh, how I figure out this weird shit. So let's get into a little water that's been sitting here for a week. And uh, yeah. I got to get one of those pipes. They are cool. <laughs> yeah, they have they have a mini version. They're they're launching uh, in the next. Well, they're working on the campaign right now. I think you can you can get one, but I, um, you have to be cool. Geniuspipe.com. But there's a slew of different designs coming out. Uh, the one I just showed you, the Modus, will be available as a mini pipe. So it's about a, it's about two thirds of the size of the the one I just showed you. A little more discreet. And then they also have one that's QR coded and RIFD chipped, and uh, so you can scan it with an app and actually upload. You know, yeah, yep, magnetic. It just splits right in half. Literally, just push. So cleaning, wipe it with a paper towel. Done. A little bit of alcohol if you want to get really into it. These are divots, so it'll, you know, this, uh, what this does is uh, as the smoke goes over these 2,000 divots, it cools the smoke and it pulls some of the tar out and so it's virtually coughless, magnetic, so nothing crazy. You can even pop the screen out and still use it if you want less metal to deal with. And it's way better without the screen. And it's way better taste without the screen, yes. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant design, but it's also just, it's ease of use. Oh, is there anything else I wanted to highlight? Mm, maybe some roses? Yeah. There we go. Uh, whoops. Here, hang on. Genius pipe. Oh, sorry, I put the space there, but yeah, geniuspipe.com. That's your website. And yeah, they're this year's sponsor of my 2018 art tour. So we've got some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, I have a bunch of them I'm eventually going to hand paint um, uh, live. So I'm priming just figuring out how the best way to prime them first uh, so that it stays on. But but those will, they'll be art pieces too. They won't be, I wouldn't recommend smoking out of them. But we'll do uh, uh, the slider. I have a bunch, um, so the silver, silver slider. I've got a bunch of these. I'm going to line them up like seven of them and I'll do one piece that goes across all of them. And then we'll put them each with a pipe. Definitely smarter than your average pipe. In fact, just got voted high times number one pipe of the year. 
uh, back in, I believe, April, because it was right before I left for tour when that got announced. So, And there's a lot of cool pipes out there that kind of are gimmicky, like the six shooter and, you know, where you can twist it and smoke six different types of weed or, but they get gummed up and, you know, this thing's just so easy to clean it, it's, uh, and use, you know, and it's good for festivals. I mean, that was one of the reasons that kind of the symbiosis between us and, and my art and them and the whole festival scene that I do uh, when I go out on tour. It's, it's just, you know, people don't know what the fuck it is. You know, we walk in like, hey, Ma, yeah, I'll be there real quick. You know, they think it's a phone, a phone charger. Um, but once you, once you smoke out of it, pull it down, it extinguishes it. So you can put it in your pocket and it won't light you on fire. You know, it's better than carrying like a glass piece around or any of that shit. But just, you know, uh, the fact that it's just people don't know what it is. So tell security it's a whatever the fuck you want. Charger, tampon holder, fucking cell phone. They really don't give a shit. But my buddy uses it as a... Uh, pretends to talk on the phone. It just goes right through security. <laughs> now I have friends that take it to work. You know, I got a buddy that's a shipbuilder. And, you know, when he's done, done in the yard, wants to take a toke after work, whoop, he's ready to roll. And all he needs is a lighter because you just pack it and put the slider back and it holds it in, so... <laughs> well, now that I look at it, I, I think it was—I think it's the first one. Yeah, I don't know if it's like concrete or. <laughs> I hate that when you look at a word. That happens to me a lot with banana. Like if I say banana over and over, it'll start to fuck with me as to why it's spelled that way. Like who chose this shit? It doesn't taste like a banana. I don't even smoke, but I don't want one. You know, yeah, I, I don't smoke, but that, you know. Crash it. He does. But, uh, yeah, I like functional pieces with cool art. Like, I got a pretty good collection of glass and pieces like that. That I, You know, I, I see a lot of glass artists at Champ Show. I've done some collabs with them and whatnot. And it's, uh, I mean, just the art form in itself. It doesn't matter if you smoke or not, so. Sometimes just the industrial design of it all is beautiful enough art just to justify owning it. Hang that shit on your wall. Yeah, hang a genius pipe on your wall. Then people will really be blown away. What on earth is that? Oh, oh. Why, it's a pipe. It's a wall pipe. It's a cigar cutter. Cigar cutter, that's right. People thought it was a, kept thinking it was a cigar cutter at the uh, at the rock shows. <laughs> incense burner or holder yeah yeah that's right there was a couple of other uh <laughs> yeah for the discerning incense burner <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we're going to go down the edge of this poker chick. Chick. Poker chip. I'm just calling everything a girl tonight. Poker chick. Poker chick. Yeah, maybe it's Freudian. Maybe I do need to go in and see the wife. <laughs> the signs all point. There we go. There we go. I need to borrow that cat in a minute. Hand over the damn cat! <laughs> I need a reference. Um, um, sure. 
Boom. There we go. Poke her chip. Sounds like a non-sexual sexual reference. It does. It's like, I'm coming in, coming at you, but I, I'm going to aim for the potato chip in your hand. And, the, and if she's cool with that, then maybe you could ask her out for coffee. But who knows? Are we done with this? Hmm. I think so. I think I like it. Oh, 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 what am I doing? What am I doing? I think I wanted to, uh... I wanted to make one of these cigarettes in her hat on fire. Boom! There we go. Can you see? <laughs> there we go. I'm going to do the waving cat. Well, that sounds weird, too. <laughs> yes, I think I think the Cheshire is one of these. I think it's a genius idea, and it will fit the genius pipe perfectly because everybody knows this damn cat, and if it's the Cheshire, that's just amazing. I think it's, I think it's simple, but I think it's very like, aha, I get it, you know, and that's what you want when you want to come up with ideas that are, that have mass appeal and but not like the B sharps. The what? Remember the Simpsons episode where Homer was in a barbershop quartet? Oh, the B sharps. The B sharps. <laughs> it's clever, but it's, yes, it, it, it stops being clever after a minute. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's sign it. I think right in there is a beautiful place to drop a signature. And then let's figure out that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the waving cat. And we're going to make it look like it's kind of sitting just like if you walk into a Chinese restaurant, it's there on the counter. And so we'll put some uh, flowers. There were some orchids at the Chinese restaurant we ate at tonight. Uh, I even had Chinese food tonight. So, uh, <laughs> And uh, and I think some fish heads, because they're cool. And it, that'll be the surreal element. But it'll also give it that really off-putting, like, eh, is it stinky? You know, so. And then we'll figure out something behind it, maybe another flower or something like that. So to me, that's more satisfying than welding 400 parts. I hope so. But if you love welding, I don't know. But if you love welding and that's more satisfying, then I am flattered. That's awesome. I'm telling you, this is going to be the great thing about Twitch, too, man. Like, everybody, I'm open for, you know, suggestions. I'm not snobby like that where it's, you know, because sometimes like that, that was just a great, like, that was, I didn't have an idea for the Cheshire yet. And that one just like, bam, done. And sometimes you have to go for it and not overthink the idea. I think a lot of people do that, and that's what the problem. That's why they maybe don't come up with the best idea possible. Uh, that's just a great idea, and so we're going to run with it. We're going to have a big fucking smile, and then the hat, cat, and then this. I'm going to elongate, I think, the uh, the hand, you know, so it'll kind of fit that vertical. So we'll put the fat cat. We'll do the we'll do the elongated hand. We'll even like sw like kind of kind of S curve it in. We'll have it up on a little box. There'll be some flowers in between it, some fish heads. And then, um, and uh, you know what? Let's, um, let's keep the background the same kind of, like, like gaudy wallpaper. So maybe we'll do some orange and brown and cream, like, stripes behind the cat or something. So we'll give it a, we'll give it like an old 70s Chinese restaurant and we're, you know, like, like a 50s, you know, she's in 1955 Reno. It'll be like a 50s Chinese restaurant. I like that. And so when you put together this whole series of five or six paintings we do or whatever, those will look dope as a series, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, I dig that. Yeah. People who weld have great ideas. <laughs> now I'm going to make a t-shirt with that saying. 
I second guess my drawings. Fuck no, absolutely not. Do not second guess your drawings. There's a time to second guess composition and maybe if it's balanced right or whatnot. I forgot to sign the damn thing. Um, but uh, but sometimes an idea just it just rocks and you got to go with it, you know. Yes, sometimes you need to acknowledge how much ass you kick and go for it. Kick, not kiss. That would be Sugar's advice. Let's zoom in on the on the signing. Slow down. There we go. Okay. No, that's an amazing idea. I love it. And in fact, it, it pertains to having this little cat here. and He's our little buddy in the studio, so... And we do have a dog over there somewhere. All right. So, uh, yeah. It's been a week. I'm like, how do I spell my name? Today's date, Maestro. July 25th. July 25th. 2018. You know what that means, and I just, oh my God, that just hit me. I am less than a month away from my 42nd birthday. Son of a bitch. <laughs> that is crazy. I think I'll start going backwards like Benjamin Button now. Next year I'll be a baby. Yes. I second guess more the execution of the drawing rather than the idea. For sure. That's, you know, that's why we sketch. And, you know, kind of fuck around with it first. And, you know, I, I do that all the time. Like, um, especially with larger paintings and whatnot. Like with the, uh, uh, during the day I'm actually working on this painting. I got to get done for my buddy. But just like, you know, sometimes it depends. Like, uh, so that's more of a full rendering of the Monty Python and the Holy Grail painting I'm doing for a friend of mine. Let me zoom out here. Whereas uh, this old hag it just started off like that. And then I put a note to run somebody's credit card on the side of the sketch. So um, eh, it got somewhere and it came out great. Um, this one, and because it was a client, you know... I had to do a fully rendered sketch in order to, uh, just to make sure I got everything that he wanted in the painting and then, you know, and to show how things work. Like this, this middle part actually is a three foot by four foot canvas. These side parts here are wooden doors that close on the canvas. And then on, once they close, it'll have a drop cap C for his last name and, and whatnot. So it's an amazing movie, right? It's, it's hilarious. I love it. It was a great project, and, and I'm working on the big painting of it. Um, I, I'm not going to stream it because it's something I'm busting out quickly during the day, but I will show it off online once it's finished uh, in the next week or so. One week away from your 24th. Oh, yeah, reverse birthday, 42, 20. Nice. I wish I was one week away from my 24th birthday. <laughs> Actually, I love it. I, I, maybe it's a guy thing, but the older I get, the more I'm like, this is fucking awesome, you know. Just because I'm finally... I'm learned. I'm learning shit. Yes, that Monty Python is amazing. When he said that's what he wanted as the commission, my buddy Bud, I was like, oh, that's just great. Like, I love it. And, of course, the main part of it has to be the Black Knight. And then you have the bunny with blood spewing out of his mouth, jumping out of the cave at him. And we'll put the holy hand grenade in here somewhere. But, um, yeah, so just to give you two ideas as far as, like, you know, working through an idea or whatnot... The uh, it could be just a just a rough rough sketch, or it could be something fully rendered and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, I think she's good to go. I definitely love how I love the '50s elements. I, I think that came out cool. Y'all gonna hate me for this? I've never seen that. 
You know, I'll tell you, the Monty Python is an acquired taste, and they're almost like what Mark Twain said about a classic book. It's a book everyone talks about, but no one's actually seen. Uh, I mean, it, it, they are cult movies, of course. And um, in fact, I just learned that Playboy, their film department, uh, produced the first Monty Python movie. But they are worth watching. All the, all of them are just fucking hilarious. It's British humor too, though, so expect it to be a little dry. But awesome movie. And they're uh, how old is that movie? Thirty years? Forty? Thirty-five years? Something like that. I don't know what that is? Did I bleed? I don't know. Well, there you go. A little blood. It's worth more. So we are all right. I love it. Okay, just kind of staring at it a minute, soaking it all in. I'll get it shot and I'll post it up on social media and whatnot. 1975. Holy crap! 1975. 40 years. 43 years. That's crazy. That movie's almost 50 fucking years old. <laughs> like, nuts. Nuts. So I was way off. I'm like, late 80s? <laughs> I mean, that would have been like 10 years. But All right, got a little bit of smoke coming in her, you know. A little bit still, eh, maybe I'll reach up and smoke that one. You know, she's got her joint and her cigarette going. She's got her, uh... oh, shit. Maybe we should put flying, some. Flying circus. Yeah. Wow. And what about that movie? It was just. What was the first one? It was just Monty Python, right? Uh, Had a little smoke in there. Yeah. Don't let them tell you you can't add something after you and sign it. For yeah. 1971. So that was their first movie that Playboy produced. Or I, you know, they 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 had stuff going on in England before them, but I think that was the first American. Uh, and then Holy Grail was after that. Yeah. And then Life of Brian, Life of the Hollywood Bowl, The Beast of Life. <laughs> Life at the Hollywood Bowl. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, okay. I've seen The Meaning of Life and I've seen The Holy Grail. And you've never seen Life of Brian? That's the one where it's like there's like. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Fucking amazing. My but I had a friend that was into it. I know I've seen Junk in the party. I'll have to see it again, yeah. Life of Brian is my fave, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I gotta watch that again. Any, well, I'll tell you, outside of the one that I'm working on, I haven't, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen anything else, so. All right. Let's sketch. In fact, uh, if you guys don't mind, I let me leave that up there so you can look at it. And if you don't want to look at that, you can look at the alien who's being waved at by the cat. He's like, yo, man, don't shoot me. I'm going to go get some water, and I will be right back. Okay. Life of Brian. Uh -huh. The film tells the story of Brian Cohen, a young Jewish man who was born on the same day as and next door to Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get some water. I'll be right back. Uh, what does the brushed metal mosquito look like? Um, see if I can find an example for you. And, and I'll... Uh, do we have any metal prints? Uh,
got Kai Martin metal. Yeah. Show you guys this. Hang on one second. That's fun. All right. Let me know when you're. Are you there, welder? <laughs> I've got an example of the metal, and um, I can show you what it looks like. It's uh, my buddy Kai Martin did the artwork. So, so it's on brushed aluminum. So it's 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 a thin piece of aluminum, uh, built-in frame, and then it's got a hanging device. And then that's the metal. So you can see how it picks up the light and whatnot. So I don't have an exact example of the mosquito, but it would be printed on this, this type of metal and brushed aluminum. So we print on it, and then we cover it with a liquid lamination. This is actually a really cool piece that Kai did. It's a PBR can. So if you look at a PBR can, it's got the red going around it with the two blue ribbons and then the red across it. So he made characters. It's basically all these characters throughout time fighting each other. And then... Uh, then you have these two death rockers up here. But, uh, but yeah, that's brushed aluminum. So, essentially, the mosquito printed on it. The one thing to know is that... So, I'll show it to you here. So, nothing white. We, we, don't, use, uh, we don't use white ink when we do uh, wood or metal prints. And it's, it's really cool. So the eye and anything white will actually come out as uh, the, the metal will show through. Um, even on some of these that are white, it, it'll be a little bit of the aluminum will show through. So it's, uh, so it's a really cool way to kind of play on the medium. And then the liquid lamination just makes it scream. So anything red especially will, uh, will pop. Um, we normally do a bunch of metal prints and put them on the front of the booth at the rock shows. Because when the sun hits it, it... Um, it really blows it up. There's people that'll be like, oh, I don't know, we saw something gleaming from across the parking lot, and we had to uh, we had to see what it was. So, yeah, the metal's super cool. Whoops, I'm going to drop the painting. But there's the mosquito. Woo! <laughs> okay, let me put that back. Scoot this uh, lovely lady off to the side. And we can get sketching on the... On the cat. Ah, uh, pencil, pencil. Gotcha. And what's cool about this cat, let's see, let's see what we want to do here. So if we uh we need some fish heads too. I like it. Here, let me see if I can pull up something real quick. 